Neo-Nazism consists of post-World War II militant social or political movements seeking to revive and implement the ideology of Nazism. Neo-Nazis seek to employ their ideology to promote hatred and attack minorities, or in some cases to create a fascist political state. It is a global phenomenon, with organized representation in many countries and international networks. It borrows elements from Nazi doctrine, including ultranationalism, racism, xenophobia, ableism, homophobia, anti-Romanism, anti-Semitism, anti-communism and initiating the Fourth Reich. Holocaust denial is a common feature, as is the incorporation of Nazi symbols and admiration of Adolf Hitler. In some European and Latin American countries, laws prohibit the expression of pro-Nazi, racist, anti-Semitic, or homophobic views. Many Nazi-related symbols are banned in European countries especially Germany in an effort to curtail neo-Nazism. Definition The term neo-Nazism describes any post-World War II militant, social or political movement seeking to revive the ideology of Nazism in whole or in part. The term neo-Nazism can also refer to the ideology of these movements, which may borrow elements from Nazi doctrine, including ultranationalism, anti-communism, racism, ableism, xenophobia, homophobia, anti-Romanism, anti-Semitism, up to initiating the Fourth Reich. Holocaust denial is a common feature, as is the incorporation of Nazi symbols and admiration of Adolf Hitler. Neo-Nazism is considered a particular form of far-right politics and right-wing extremism. Hyperborean racial doctrine Neo-Nazi writers have posited a spiritual, esoteric doctrine of race, which moves beyond the primarily Darwinian-inspired materialist scientific racism popular mainly in the Anglosphere during the 20th century. Figures influential in the development of neo-Nazi racism, such as Miguel Serrano and Julius Evola writers who are described by critics of Nazism such as the Southern Poverty Law Center as influential within what it presents as parts of the bizarre fringes of National Socialism, past and present, claim that the Hyperborean ancestors of the Aryans were in the distant past, far higher beings than their current state, having suffered from involution due to mixing with the Telluric peoples, supposed creations of the Demiurge. Within this theory, if the Aryans are to return to the golden age of the distant past, they need to awaken the memory of the blood. An extraterrestrial origin of the Hyperboreans is often claimed. These theories draw influence from Gnosticism and Tantrism, building on the work of the Ananarb. Within this racist theory, Jews are held up as the antithesis of nobility, purity and beauty. <inaudible> <inaudible> Ecology and environmentalism Neo-Nazism generally aligns itself with a blood and soil variation of environmentalism, which has themes in common with deep ecology, the organic movement and animal protectionism. This tendency, sometimes called ecofascism, was represented in the original German National Socialism by Richard Walther Dere who was the Reichsminister of Food from 1933 until 1942. History Topic. Germany and Austria 1945–1950s Following the defeat of Nazi Germany, the political ideology of the ruling party, Nazism, was in complete disarray. The final leader of the National Socialist German Workers' Party was Martin Bormann. He died on 2 May 1945 during the Battle of Berlin, but the Soviet Union did not reveal his death to the rest of the world, and his ultimate fate remained a mystery for many years. Conspiracy theories emerged about Hitler himself, that he had secretly survived the war and fled to South America or elsewhere. The Allied Control Council officially dissolved the NSDAP on 10 October 1945, marking the end of old national socialism. A process of denazification began, and the Nuremberg trials took place, where many major leaders and ideologues were condemned to death by October 1946, others committed suicide. In both the East and West, surviving ex-party members and military veterans assimilated to the new reality and had no interest in constructing a neo-Nazism 
However, during the 1949 elections a number of National Socialist advocates such as Fritz Rossler had infiltrated the National Conservative Deutsche Rechtspartei, which had five members elected. Rossler and others left to found the more radical Socialist Reich Party under Otto Ernst Remmer. At the onset of the Cold War, the SERP favored the Soviet Union over the United States, in Austria national independence had been restored, and the Verbotsgesetz 1947 explicitly criminalized the NSDAP and any attempt at restoration. West Germany adopted a similar law to target parties it defined as anti-constitutional, Article 21 paragraph 2 in the Basic Law, banning the Socialist Reich Party in 1952 for being opposed to liberal democracy. As a consequence some members of the nascent movement of German neo-Nazism joined the Deutsche Reichsparte of which Hans Ulrich Rudel was the most prominent figure. Younger members founded the Viking Jugend modeled after the Hitler Youth. The Deutsche Reichsparte stood for elections from 1953 until 1961 fetching around 1% of the vote each time. Rudel befriended French-born Savitri Devi, who was a proponent of esoteric Nazism. In the 1950s she wrote a number of books, such as Pilgrimage 1958, which concerns prominent Third Reich sites, and The Lightning and the Sunday 1958, in which she claims that Adolf Hitler was an avatar of the god Vishnu. She was not alone in this reorientation of National Socialism towards its Thulian roots. The Artgemeinschaft, founded by former SS member Wilhelm Cussero, attempted to promote a new paganism. In the German Democratic Republic a former member of SA, Wilhelm Adam, founded the National Democratic Party of Germany, East Germany It reached out to those attracted by the Nazi Party before 1945 and provide them with a political outlet, so that they would not be tempted to support the far right again or turn to the anti-communist Western allies. Stalin wanted to use them to create a new pro-Soviet and anti-Western strain in German politics. According to top Soviet diplomat Vladimir Semyonov, Stalin even suggested that they could be allowed to continue publishing their own newspaper, Volkischer Biobachter. While in Austria, former SS member Wilhelm Lang founded an esoteric group known as the Vienna Lodge. He popularized Nazism and occultism such as the Black Sun and ideas of Third Reich survival colonies below the polar ice caps. With the onset of the Cold War the Allied forces had lost interest in prosecuting anyone as part of the denazification. In the mid-1950s this new political environment allowed Otto Strasser, an NS activist on the left of the NSDAP, who had founded the Black Front to return from exile. In 1956, Strasser founded the German Social Union as a Black Front successor, promoting a Strasserite, nationalist and socialist policy, which dissolved in 1962 due to lack of support. Other Third Reich-associated groups were the HIAG and Stille Hilf dedicated to advancing the interests of Waffen-SS veterans and rehabilitating them into the new democratic society. However, they did not claim to be attempting to restore National Socialism, instead working with the Social Democrats and Christian Democrats. Many bureaucrats who served under the Third Reich continued to serve in German administration after the war. According to the Simon Wiesenthal Center, many of the more than 90,000 Nazi war criminals recorded in German files were serving in positions of prominence under Chancellor Konrad Adenauer. Not until the 1960s were the former concentration camp personnel prosecuted by West Germany in the Belzec trial, Frankfurt-Auschwitz trials, Treblinka trials, Kelmno trials, and the Sobibor trial. However, the government had passed laws prohibiting National Socialists from publicly expressing their beliefs. Topic. Universal National Socialism, 1950s to 1970s Neo-Nazism found expression outside of Germany, including in countries who fought against the Third Reich during the Second World War, and sometimes adopted pan-European or universal characteristics, beyond the parameters of German nationalism. The two main tendencies, with differing styles and even worldviews, were the followers of the American Francis Parker Yaqui, who was fundamentally anti-American and advocated for a pan-European nationalism and those of George Lincoln Rockwell an American conservative. Yaqui, a neo-Spenglerian author, had written Imperium, the Philosophy of History and Politics 1949, dedicated to the hero of the 20th century, namely, Adolf Hitler, and founded the European Liberation Front. 
He was interested more in the destiny of Europe. To this end, he advocated a national Bolshevik esque Red Brown alliance against American culture and influenced 1960s figures such as SS veteran Jean Francois Thuriart. Yaqui was also fond of Arab nationalism, in particular Gamal Abdel Nasser, as well as this he saw Fidel Castro's Cuban Revolution as a positive and visited officials there. Yaqui's views impressed Otto Ernst Remmer and the radical traditionalist philosopher Julius Evola. He was constantly hounded by the FBI and was eventually arrested in 1960, before committing suicide. Domestically, Yaqui's biggest sympathizers were the National Renaissance Party, including James H. Madole, H. Keith Thompson and Eustace Mullins protégé of Ezra Pound and the Liberty Lobby of Willis Cardo. Rockwell, an American conservative, was first politicized by anti-communism and opposed to racial integration, before becoming anti-Jewish. In response to his opponents calling him a Nazi, he theatrically appropriated the aesthetic elements of the NSDAP, to own the intended insult. In 1959, Rockwell founded the American Nazi Party and instructed his members to dress in imitation saw style brown shirts, while flying the flag of the Third Reich. In contrast to Yaqui, he was pro American and cooperated with FBI requests, despite the party being targeted under COINTELPRO due to the mistaken belief that they were agents of Nasser's Egypt during a brief intelligence. Brown Scare. Later leaders of American white nationalism came to politics through the ANP, including a teenage David Duke and William Luther Pierce of the National Alliance, although they soon distanced themselves from explicit self identification with neo Nazism. In 1961, the World Union of National Socialists was founded by Rockwell and Colin Jordan of the British National Socialist Movement, adopting the Cotswold Declaration. French socialite Françoise Dior was involved romantically with Jordan and his deputy John Tyndall and a friend of Savitri Devi, who also attended the meeting. The National Socialist Movement wore quasi saw uniforms, was involved in streets conflicts with the Jewish 62 group. In the 1970s, Tyndall's earlier involvement with neo-Nazism would come back to haunt the National Front, which he led, as they attempted to ride a wave of anti-immigration populism and concerns over British national decline. Televised exposes on This Week in 1974 and World in Action in 1978, showed their neo-Nazi pedigree and damaged their electoral chances. In 1967, Rockwell was killed by a disgruntled former member. Matthias Cole took control of the ANP, and strongly influenced by Savitri Devi, gradually transformed it into an esoteric group known as the New Order. In Franco's Spain, certain SS refugees, most notably Otto Skorzeny, Leon de Grel, and the son of Klaus Barbie, became associated with CEDADE, Circulo Espanol de Amigos de Europa, an organization which disseminated Third Reich apologetics out of Barcelona. They intersected with neo-Nazi advocates from Mark Fredrickson in France to Salvador Borrego in Mexico. In the post-fascist Italian social movement splinter groups such as Orden Nuovo and Avangardia Nazionale, involved in the «Years of Lead», considered National Socialism a reference. Franco Frida created a «Nazi Maoist» synthesis. In Germany itself, the various Third Reich nostalgic movements coalesced around the National Democratic Party of Germany in 1964 and in Austria the National Democratic Party in 1967 as the primary sympathizers of the NSDAP passed, although more publicly cautious than earlier groups. <laughs> Holocaust denial and subcultures, 1970s to 1990s Holocaust denial, the claim that six million Jews were not deliberately and systematically exterminated as an official policy of the Third Reich and Adolf Hitler, became a more prominent feature of neo-Nazism in the 1970s. Before this time, Holocaust denial had long existed as a sentiment among neo-Nazis, but it had not yet been systematically articulated as a theory with a bibliographical canon. Few of the major theorists of Holocaust denial who call themselves revisionists can be uncontroversially classified as outright neo-Nazis though some works such as those of David Irving forward a clearly sympathetic view of Hitler and the publisher Ernst Zundel was deeply tied to international neo-Nazism, however, the main interest of Holocaust denial to neo-Nazis was their hope that it would help them rehabilitate their political ideology in the eyes of the general public. Did Six Million Really Die? 1974 by Richard Verrill and the Hoax of the Twentieth Century 1976 by Arthur Butts are popular examples of Holocaust denial material. 
Key developments in international neo-Nazism during this time include the radicalization of the Vlaams Militanten Ord under former Hitler Youth member Bert Eriksson. They began hosting an annual conference, the Iron Pilgrimage, at Dixmuid, which drew kindred ideologues from across Europe and beyond. As well as this, the NSDAP, AU under Gary Locke arose in the United States in 1972 and challenged the international influence of the Rockwellite WUNS. Locke's organization drew support from the National Socialist Movement of Denmark of POVL Ries Knudsen and various German and Austrian figures who felt that the national democratic parties were too bourgeois and insufficiently national socialist in orientation. This included Michael Koonin, Christian Wark, Bella Ewald Aldans and Gottfried Kussel of the 1977-founded ANS-NS which called for the establishment of a Germanic Fourth Reich. Some ANS-NS members were imprisoned for planning paramilitary attacks on NATO bases in Germany and planning to liberate Rudolf Hess from Spandau prison. The organization was officially banned in 1983 by the Minister of the Interior. During the late 1970s, a British subculture came to be associated with neo-Nazism, the skinheads. Portraying an ultra-masculine, crude and aggressive image, with working-class references, some of the skinheads joined the British movement under Michael McLaughlin successor of Colin Jordan, while others became associated with the National Front's Rock Against Communism project which was meant to counter the SWP's Rock Against Racism. The most significant music group involved in this project was Screwdriver, led by Ian Stewart Donaldson. Together with XBM member Nicky Crane, Donaldson founded the International Blood and Honor Network in 1987. By 1992 this network, with input from Harold Covington, had developed a paramilitary wing, Combat 18, which intersected with football hooligan firms such as the Chelsea Headhunters. The neo-Nazi skinhead movement spread to the United States, with groups such as the Hammerskins. It was popularized from 1986 onwards by Tom Metzger of the White Aryan Resistance. Since then it has spread across the world. Films such as Romper Stomper 1992 and American History X 1998 would fix a public perception that neo-Nazism and skinheads were synonymous. New developments also emerged on the esoteric level, as former Chilean diplomat Miguel Serrano built on the works of Carl Jung, Otto Rahn, Wilhelm Landig, Julius Evola and Savitri Devi to bind together and develop already existing theories. Serrano had been a member of the National Socialist Movement of Chile in the 1930s and from the early days of neo-Nazism he had been in contact with key figures across Europe and beyond. Despite this, he was able to work as an ambassador to numerous countries until the rise of Salvador Allende. In 1984 he published his book Adolf Hitler, The Ultimate Avatar. Serrano claimed that the Aryans were extragalactic beings who founded Hyperborea and lived the heroic life of bodhisattvas, while the Jews were created by the Demiurge and were concerned only with coarse materialism. Serrano claimed that a new golden age can be attained if the Hyperboreans repurify their blood supposedly the light of the black sun and restore their blood memory, as with Savitri Devi before him, Serrano's works became a key point of reference in neo-Nazism. Topic lifting of the Iron Curtain, 1990s present with the fall of the Berlin Wall and the collapse of the Soviet Union during the early 1990s, neo-Nazism began to spread its ideas in the East, as hostility to the triumphant liberal order was high and revanchism a widespread feeling. In Russia, during the chaos of the early 1990s, an amorphous mixture of KGB hardliners, orthodox neo tsarist nostalgics i.e. Pamyat and explicit national socialists found themselves strewn together in the same camp. They were united by opposition to the influence of the United States, against the liberalizing legacy of Mikhail Gorbachev's perestroika and on the Jewish question, Soviet Zionology merged with a more explicit anti-Jewish sentiment. The most significant organization representing this was Russian national unity under the leadership of Alexander Barkashov, where black uniform-clad Russians marched with a red flag incorporating the swastika under the banner of Russia for Russians. These forces came together in a last gasp effort to save the Supreme Soviet of Russia against Boris Yeltsin during the 1993 Russian constitutional crisis. As well as events in Russia, in newly independent ex-Soviet states, annual commemorations for SS volunteers now took place, particularly in Latvia, Estonia and the Ukraine. The Russian developments excited German neo-Nazism who dreamed of a Berlin-Moscow alliance against the supposedly decadent. 
Atlanticist forces, a dream which had been thematic since the days of Remer, Zundel visited Russia and met with Russian national unity luminaries such as ex-KGB General Alexander Sturgilov. Despite these initial aspirations, international neo-Nazism and its close affiliates in ultranationalism would be split over the Bosnian War between 1992 and 1995, as part of the breakup of Yugoslavia. The split would largely be along ethnic and sectarian lines. The Germans and the French would largely back the Western Catholic Croats Lox NSDAP, AU explicitly called for volunteers, which Kunin's Free German Workers Party answered and the French formed the Group Jacques Doriot. While the Russians and the Greeks would back the Orthodox Serbs including Russians from Barkashev's Russian National Unity, Eduard Limonov's National Bolshevik Front and Golden Dawn members joined the Greek Volunteer Guard. Indeed, the revival of National Bolshevism was able to steal some of the thunder from overt Russian neo-Nazism, as ultra-nationalism was wedded with veneration of Joseph Stalin in place of Adolf Hitler, while still also flirting with National Socialist aesthetics. Topic. Analogous European movements Outside Germany, in other countries which were involved with the Axis powers and had their own native ultra-nationalist movements, which sometimes collaborated with the Third Reich but were not technically German-style national socialists, revivalist and nostalgic movements have emerged in the post-war period which, as neo-Nazism has done in Germany, seek to rehabilitate their various loosely associated ideologies. These movements include neo-fascists and post-fascists in Italy, Vichyites, Pettinists and national Europeans in France, Eustace sympathizers in Croatia, neo-Chetniks in Serbia, Iron Guard revivalists in Romania, Hungarists and Hortheists in Hungary, Banderaists in the Ukraine which had a complicated relationship with the Axis powers and others. Italy Following the last stand of Italian fascism with the Germans supported Italian Social Republic towards the end of the Second World War, those elements within Italian society which remained loyal to the legacy of Benito Mussolini and fascism especially veterans of the National Republican Army, rejecting both the Catholic and Communist alternatives prominent in mainstream Italian politics, founded the Italian Social Movement in 1946 under Giorgio Almiranti. The MSI was regarded as the successor of the National Fascist Party and the Republican Fascist Party. The motto of the party was, "...not repudiate, not restore," indicating a more moderate parliamentary democratic neo-fascism, which did not heap scorn on the recent past. Italian society did not undergo a process as extensive as the post-war denazification campaign in occupied Germany, partly due to the Cold War and the Western Allies not wanting Italy to move towards the Warsaw Pact, which was not an impossibility at the time. The Italian social movement held a similar position in Italian politics that the National Democratic Party of Germany did in Germany, careful enough to stay within the laws of the new democratic state, but still clearly identified with the Axis legacy. During the 1950s, the MSI moved closer to bourgeois conservative politics on the domestic front, which led to radical youths founding hard-line splinter groups, such as Pino Rauti's Orden Nuovo later succeeded by Orden Nero and Stefano della Chiai's Avangardia Nazionale. These organizations were influenced by the esotericism of Julius Evola and considered the Waffen SS and Romanian leader Corneliu Zelia Codrianu a reference, moving beyond Italian fascism. They were implicated in paramilitary attacks during the late 1960s to the early 1980s, such as the Piazza Fontana bombing. Della Chiai had even assisted Junio Valerio Borghese in a failed 1970 coup attempt known as the Golpe Borghese, which attempted to reinstate a fascist state in Italy. During the late 1980s and early 1990s, the Italian social movement under the leadership of Gianfranco Fini moved closer to conservative politics, adopting a post-fascist position. This was opposed by the fascist element under Rauti who created Fiamma Tricolore in 1995. The party was dissolved under Fini in 1995, who replaced it with the National Alliance. This party rapidly moved away from any connection to the fascist past, towards the centre-right in coalition with Silvio Berlusconi's Forza Italia. The two parties merged in 2009 to become the People of Freedom. Alessandra Mussolini, troubled by Fini's explicit condemnation of her grandfather broke with the Intifound Social Action. 
Aside from Fiamma Tricolore, the other extant neo-fascist groups in Italy are Forza Nuova, the Front Nazionale, Movimento Idea Sociale another Rauti creation, and the Cultural Casapound Project. In terms of current size, they are mostly negligible. France In France, the most enthusiastic collaborationists during the German occupation of France had been the National Popular Rally of Marcel Dayot former SFIO members and the French Popular Party of Jacques Doriot former French Communist Party members. These two groups, like the Germans, saw themselves as combining ultra-nationalism and socialism. In the south there existed the vassal state of Vichy France under the military. Hero of the Verdun. Marshal Philippe Pétain whose Révolution Nationale emphasized an authoritarian Catholic conservative politics. Following the liberation of France and the creation of the Fourth French Republic, collaborationists were prosecuted during the Épuration Légale and nearly 800 put to death for treason under Charles de Gaulle. In the aftermath of the Second World War, the main concern of the French radical right was the collapse of the French Empire, in particular the Algerian War, which led to the creation of the OAS. Outside of this, individual fascistic activists such as Maurice Bardèche, brother-in-law of Robert Brasilic, as well as SS veterans Saint Lou and René Bennett, were active in France and involved in the European Social Movement and later the New European Order, alongside similar groups from across Europe. Early neo-fascist groups included Jeune Nation, which introduced the Celtic cross into use by radical right groups, an association which would spread internationally. A neither east nor west. Pan-Europeanism was most popular among French fascistic activists until the late 1960s, partly motivated by feelings of national vulnerability following the collapse of their empire, thus the Belgian SS veteran Jean-François Thuriart's group Jeune Europe also had a considerable French contingent. It was the 1960s, during the Fifth French Republic, that a considerable upturn in French neo-fascism occurred, some of it in response to the protests of 1968. The most explicitly pro-Nazi of these was the fane of Marc Fredrickson. Neo-fascist groups included Pierre Sido's Occident, the Ordre Nouveau which was banned after violent clashes with the Trotskyist LCR and the student-based group Union Defense. A number of these activists such as François Duprat were instrumental in founding the Front National under Jean-Marie Le Pen, but the FN also included a broader selection from the French hard right, including not only these neo-fascist elements, but also Catholic integrists, monarchists, Algerian war veterans, Pujadists and national conservatives. Others from these neo-fascist micro-groups formed the Parti des Forces Nouvelles working against Le Pen. Within the FN itself, Duprat founded the fein backed group's Nationalistes Revolutionnaires faction, until his 1978 assassination. The subsequent history of the French hard right has been the conflict between the national conservative controlled FN and national revolutionary fascistic and national Bolshevik splinter or opposition groups. The latter include groups in the tradition of Thuriart and Duprat, such as the Parti Communautaire National Europen, Troisième Voy, the Nouvelle Résistance of Christian Boucher, Unité Radical and most recently Bloc Identitaire. Direct splits from the FN include the 1987 founded Fein Revival Parti Nationaliste Français et Europen, which was disbanded in 2000. Neo-Nazi organizations are outlawed in the Fifth French Republic, yet a significant number of them still exist. Topic. Croatia Neo-Nazis in Croatia base their ideology on the writings of Ante Pavelic and the Ustes, a fascist anti-Yugoslav separatist movement. The Ustes regime committed a genocide against Serbs, Jews and Roma. At the end of World War II, many Ustes members fled to the West, where they found sanctuary and continued their political and terrorist activities which were tolerated due to Cold War hostilities. In 1999, Zagreb's square of the victims of fascism was renamed Croatian Nobles Square, provoking widespread criticism of Croatia's attitude towards the Holocaust. In 2000, the Zagreb City Council again renamed the square into Square of the Victims of Fascism. Many streets in Croatia were renamed after the prominent Ustase figure Mile Budak, which provoked outrage amongst the Serbian minority. Since 2002, there has been a reversal of this development, and streets with the name of Mile Budak or other persons connected with the Ustase movement are few or non-existent. A plaque in Slunge with the inscription, Croatian Knight Jury Francetic, 
was erected to commemorate Francetic, the notorious Eustace leader of the Black Legion. The plaque remained there for four years, until it was removed by the authorities. In 2003, Croatian Penal Code was amended with provisions prohibiting the public display of Nazi symbols, the propagation of Nazi ideology, historical revisionism, and Holocaust denial, but the amendments were annulled in 2004 since they weren't enacted in accordance with a constitutionally prescribed procedure. Nevertheless, since 2006 Croatian penal code explicitly prohibits any type of hate crime based on race, color, gender, sexual orientation, religion or national origin. There have been instances of hate speech in Croatia, such as the use of the phrase SRBE na VRBE, hang Serbs on the willow trees. In 2004, an Orthodox church was spray painted with pro Ustase graffiti. During some protests in Croatia, supporters of Ante Gotovina and other at the time suspected war criminals all acquitted in 2012 have carried nationalist symbols and pictures of Pavelic. On 17 May 2007, a concert in Zagreb by Thompson, a popular Croatian singer, was attended by 60,000 people, some of them wearing Ustase uniforms. Some gave Ustase salutes and shouted the Ustase slogan, Za dom spremni, for the homeland, ready. This event prompted the Simon Wiesenthal Center to publicly issue a protest to the Croatian president. Cases of displaying Eustish memorabilia have been recorded at the commemoration for the Bleiburg repatriations held annually in Bleiburg, Austria. Topic Serbia An example of neo-Nazism in Serbia is the group Nationalni Stroj. In 2006 charges were brought against 18 leading members. The other organization was Obraz which was banned on 12 June 2012 by Constitutional Court of Serbia. Besides political parties, there are a few militant neo-Nazi organizations in Serbia, such as Blood and Honor Serbia and Combat 18. Topic Hungary In Hungary, the historical political party which allied itself ideologically with German National Socialism and drew inspiration from it, was the Arrow Cross Party of Ferenc Szálasi. They referred to themselves explicitly as national socialists and within Hungarian politics this tendency is known as Hungarism. After the Second World War, exiles such as Arpad Heni kept the Hungarist tradition alive. Following the fall of the Hungarian People's Republic in 1989, which was a Marxist-Leninist state and a member of the Warsaw Pact, many new parties emerged. Amongst these was the Hungarian National Front of István Georgos, which was a Hungarist party and considered itself the heirs of Arrow Cross style National Socialism, a self description they explicitly embraced. It forged links with Gottfried Kussel and the NSDAP, AO. In the 2000s, Georgos' movement moved closer to a national communist and neo Eurasian position, aligned with Alexander Dugan, cooperating with the Hungarian Workers' Party. Some Hungarists opposed this and founded the Pax Hungarica movement. In modern Hungary, the ultranationalist Jobbik is regarded by some scholars as a neo-Nazi party, for example, it has been termed as such by Randolph L. Bram. The party denies being neo-Nazi, although there is extensive proof that the leading members of the party made no effort to hide their racism and antisemitism. Rudolf Paksa, a scholar of the Hungarian far right, describes Jobbik as anti-Semitic, racist, homophobic, and chauvinistic, but not as neo-Nazi because it does not pursue the establishment of a totalitarian regime. Historian Christian Ungvari writes that it is safe to say that certain messages of Jobbik can be called open neo-Nazi propaganda. However, it is quite certain that the popularity of the party is not due to these statements. Topic Romania In Romania, the ultra-nationalist movement which allied itself with the Axis powers and German National Socialism was the Iron Guard, also known as the Legion of the Archangel Michael. There are some modern political organizations which consider themselves heirs of legionarism, this includes Noah Dripta and the Everything for the Country Party, founded by former Iron Guard members. The latter organization was outlawed in 2015. Aside, from these Romanian organizations, the 64 counties youth movement representing ultra-nationalism from the Hungarian minority is also present, especially in Transylvania. Other nationalistic and irredentist groups such as the Greater Romania Party do not originate from legionarism, but in fact grew out of national communist tendencies from the era of Nicolae Ceausescu the party was founded by his court poet. Corneliu Vadim Tudor. Topic Ukraine In 1991 Svoboda was founded as the Social National Party of Ukraine. The party combined radical nationalism and neo-Nazi features. It was renamed and rebranded 13 years later as All-Ukrainian Association Svoboda in 2004 under Ole Tyanobok. 
In 2016, the nation reported that in Ukrainian municipal elections held in October 2015, the neo-Nazi Svoboda Party won 10% of the vote in Kiev and placed second in Lviv. The Svoboda Party's candidate actually won the mayoral election in the city of Konotop. Quote, the Svoboda Party mayor in Konotop reportedly has the number. 1488s displayed on his car and has refused to display the city's official flag because it contains a Star of David, and has implied that Jews were responsible for the Holodomor. The topic of Ukrainian nationalism and its alleged relationship to neo Nazism came to the fore in polemics about the more radical elements involved in the Euromaidan protests and subsequent Ukrainian crisis from 2013 onward. Some Russian, Latin American, U.S. and Israeli media have attempted to portray the Ukrainian nationalists in the conflict as neo-Nazi. The main Ukrainian organizations involved with a neo-Bandarite legacy are Right Sector, Svoboda and Azov Battalion. The persons regarded as Ukraine's national heroes, Stepan Bandera, Roman Shukhevich or Dmitro Klychkovsky of the Organization of Ukrainian Nationalists OUN, and Ukrainian Insurgent Army UPA, at times supported and then opposed the presence of the Third Reich in Ukraine. After Yanukovych's ouster in February 2014, the interim Yatsenyuk government placed four Svoboda members in leading positions Alexander Sitch as Vice Prime Minister of Ukraine, Ihor Tenyuk as Minister of Defense, lawyer Ihor Shveka as Minister of Agrarian Policy and Food, and Andriy Moknik as Minister of Ecology and Natural Resources of Ukraine. Since 14 April 2016 the chairman of the Ukrainian parliament has been Andriy Paraby, the co-founder of the neo-Nazi Social National Party of Ukraine. In June 2015, Democratic Representative John Conyers and his Republican colleague Ted Yoho offered bipartisan amendments to block the U.S. military training of Ukraine's Azov Battalion, called a neo-Nazi paramilitary militia by Conyers and Yoho. Andriy Beletsky, the head of the ultra-nationalist and neo-Nazi political group's Social National Assembly and Patriots of Ukraine, has been commander of the Azov Battalion. Azov Battalion of the Ukrainian National Guard is fighting pro-Russian separatists in the war in Donbass. Some members of the battalion are openly white supremacists. Issues <inaudible> 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 Ex-Nazis in mainstream politics The most significant case on an international level was the election of Kurt Waldheim to the presidency of Austria in 1986. It came to light that Waldheim had been a member of the National Socialist German Students League, the SA, and served as an intelligence officer during the Second World War. Following this he served as an Austrian diplomat and was the Secretary General of the United Nations from 1972 until 1981. After revelations of Waldheim's past were made by an Austrian journalist, Waldheim clashed with the World Jewish Congress on the international stage. Waldheim's record was defended by Bruno Kreisky, an Austrian Jew who served as Chancellor of Austria. The legacy of the affair lingers on, as Viktor Ostrovsky has claimed the Mossad doctored the file of Waldheim to implicate him in war crimes. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Contemporary right-wing populism. Some critics have sought to draw a connection between Nazism and modern right-wing populism in Europe, but the two are not widely regarded as interchangeable by most academics. In Austria, the Freedom Party of Austria FPO served as a shelter for ex-Nazis almost from its inception. In 1980, scandals undermined Austria's two main parties and the economy stagnated. Georg Haider became leader of the FPO and offered partial justification for Nazism, calling its employment policy effective. In the 1994 Austrian election, the FPO won 22% of the vote, as well as 33% of the vote in Carinthia and 22% in Vienna, showing that it had become a force capable of reversing the old pattern of Austrian politics. Historian Walter Lacour writes that even though Hayter welcomed former Nazis at his meetings and went out of his way to address Schutzstaffel SS veterans, the FPO is not a fascist party in the traditional sense, since it has not made anti communism an important issue, and it does not advocate the overthrow throw of the democratic order or the use of violence. In his view, the FPO is not quite fascist, although it is part of a tradition, similar to that of 19th-century Viennese mayor Karl Luger, which involves nationalism, xenophobic populism, and authoritarianism. 
Haider, who in 2005 left the Freedom Party and formed the Alliance for Austria's Future, was killed in a traffic accident in October 2008. Barbara Rosenkrantz, the Freedom Party's candidate for the Austrian presidential election, 2010, is controversial for having made allegedly pro Nazi statements. Rosenkrantz is married to Horst Rosenkrantz, a key member of a banned neo Nazi party, who is known for publishing far right books. Rosenkrantz says she cannot detect anything dishonorable in her husband's activities. Around the world Europe Belgium A Belgian neo-Nazi organization, Blode, Bodum, EER and Tro Blood, Soil, Honor and Loyalty, was created in 2004 after splitting from the international network Blood and Honor. The group rose to public prominence in September 2006, after 17 members including 11 soldiers were arrested under the December 2003 anti-terrorist laws and laws against racism, antisemitism and supporters of censorship. According to Justice Minister Laurette Onkelinks and Interior Minister Patrick Duell, the suspects 11 of whom were members of the military were preparing to launch terrorist attacks in order to destabilize Belgium. According to the journalist Manuel Abramovich, of the resistances, the extremists of the radical right have always had as its aim to infiltrate the state mechanisms including the army in the 1970s and the 1980s, through Westland New Post and the Front de la Yoines, a police operation, which mobilized 150 agents, searched five military barracks in Leopoldsburg near the Dutch border, Kleine Brogel, Pier, Brussels Royal Military School and Zedelgem as well as 18 private addresses in Flanders. They found weapons, munitions, explosives and a homemade bomb large enough to make a car explode. The leading suspect, BT, was organizing the trafficking of weapons and was developing international links, in particular with the Dutch far-right movement De Nationale Alliantie. Topic: <laughs> Bosnia and Herzegovina. The neo-Nazi white nationalist organization Bosanski Pokret Nationalnog Panosa, Bosnian Movement of National Pride, was founded in Bosnia and Herzegovina in July 2009. Its model is the Waffen SS Hanscher Division, which was composed of Bosniak volunteers. It proclaimed its main enemies to be Jews, Roma, Serbian Chetniks, the Croatian separatists, Josip Broz Tito, communists, homosexuals, and blacks. Its ideology is a mixture of Bosnian nationalism, national socialism, and white nationalism. It says, quote, quote, Ideologies that are not welcome in Bosnia are, Zionism, Islamism, Communism, Capitalism. The only ideology good for us is Bosnian nationalism because it secures national prosperity and social justice. The group is led by a person nicknamed Saberswig, after the commander of the 13th SS Hanscher. The group's strongest area of operations is in the Tuzla area of Bosnia. Czech Republic The government of the Czech Republic strictly punishes neo-Nazism neo According to a report by the Ministry of the Interior of the Czech Republic, neo-Nazis committed more than 211 crimes in 2013. The Czech Republic has various neo-Nazi groups. One of them is the group Wotan Jugend, based in Germany. Estonia. In 2006, Roman Aline, a Jewish theater director from St. Petersburg, Russia, was attacked by neo-Nazis when returning from an underground tunnel after a rehearsal. Aline subsequently accused Estonian police of indifference after filing the incident. When a dark-skinned French student was attacked in Tartu, the head of an association of foreign students claimed that the attack was characteristic of a wave of neo-Nazi violence. An Estonian police official, however, stated that there were only a few cases involving foreign students over the previous two years. In November 2006, the Estonian government passed a law banning the display of Nazi symbols. The 2008 United Nations Human Rights Council Special Rapporteur's report noted that community representatives and non governmental organizations devoted to human rights had pointed out that neo Nazi groups were active in Estonia particularly in Tartu 
and had perpetrated acts of violence against non-European minorities. Topic: <inaudible> Germany. Following the failure of the National Democratic Party of Germany in the election of 1969, small groups committed to the revival of Nazi ideology began to emerge in Germany. The NPD splintered following the election giving rise to paramilitary Wehrsport group. These groups attempted to organize under a national umbrella organization called the Action Front of National Socialists, National Activists. Neo-Nazi movements in East Germany were born of rebellion against the communist regime. The banning of Nazi symbols created fertile ground for neo-Nazism, then in its infancy, to develop as an anti-authoritarian youth movement. Bands like Screwdriver served as tools for far-right recruitment, mail-order networks developed to send verboten Nazi-themed music cassettes and merchandise to Germany. Turks in Germany have been victims of neo-Nazi violence on several occasions. In 1992, two young girls, aged 10 and 14, were killed in the Maln arson attack along with their grandmother, nine others were injured. In 1993, five Turks were killed in the Solingen arson attack. In response to the fire Turkish youth in Solingen rioted chanting, Nazis out! and We want Nazi blood! In other parts of Germany police had to intervene to protect skinheads from assault. The Hoyerswerda riots and Rostock Lichtenhagen riots targeting migrants and ethnic minorities living in Germany also took place during the 1990s. Between 2000 and 2007, eight Turkish immigrants, one Greek, and a German policewoman were murdered by the neo Nazi National Socialist Underground. The NSU has its roots in the former East German town of Thuringia, which The Guardian identified as one of the heartlands of Germany's radical right. The German intelligence services have been criticized for extravagant distributions of cash to informants within the far-right movement. Tino Brandt publicly boasted on television that he had received around €100,000 in funding from the German state. Though Brandt did not give the state useful information, the funding supported recruitment efforts in Thuringia during the early 1990s. Brandt was eventually sentenced to five and a half years in prison on for 66 counts of child prostitution and child sexual abuse. Police were only able to locate the killers when they were tipped off following a botched bank robbery in Eisenach. As the police closed in on them, the two men committed suicide. They had evaded capture for 13 years. Beate Chape, who had been living with the two men in Zwickau, turned herself in to the German authorities a few days later. Chape's trial began in May 2013. She was charged with nine counts of murder. She plead, not guilty. According to The Guardian, the NSU may have enjoyed protection and support from certain elements of the state. Anders Breivik, a fan of Chapes, reportedly sent her a letter from prison in 2012. According to the annual report of Germany's Interior Intelligence Service for 2012, at the time there were 26,000 right wing extremists living in Germany, including 6,000 neo Nazis. The neo Nazi organizations are not outlawed in Germany, although Holocaust denial is a crime, according to the German Criminal Code and Section 130. Public incitement. Topic. Greece In April 1967, a few weeks prior to an election, a military coup d'état took place in Greece and a fascist military government ruled the country from 1967 to 1974. It was called the «Regime of the Colonels» and was headed by Colonel Georgios Papadopoulos. The official reason given for the coup was that a «communist conspiracy» had infiltrated all levels of society. Although there have been persistent rumors about an active support of the coup by the U.S. government, there is no evidence to support such claims. The timing of the coup apparently caught the CIA by surprise. The far right political party Golden Dawn is generally labeled neo Nazi, although the group rejects this label. A few Golden Dawn members participated in the Bosnian War in the Greek Volunteer Guard and were present in Srebrenica during the Srebrenica massacre. The party has its roots in Papadopoulos regime. There is often collaboration between the state and neo-Nazi elements in Greece. 
In 2018, during the trial of 69 members of the Golden Dawn Party, evidence was presented of the close ties between the party and the Hellenic police. Golden Dawn has spoken out in favor of the Assad regime in Syria, and the Strasserist group Black Lily have claimed to have sent mercenaries to Syria to fight alongside the Syrian regime, specifically mentioning their participation in the Battle of al Qusayr. In the 6 May 2012 legislative election, Golden Dawn received 6.97% of the votes, entering the Greek parliament for the first time with 21 representatives, but when the elected parties were unable to form a coalition government a second election was held in June 2012. Golden Dawn received 6.92% of the votes in the June election and entered the Greek parliament with 18 representatives. Since 2008, neo-Nazi violence in Greece has targeted immigrants, leftists and anarchist activists. In 2009, certain far-right groups announced that Agios Pantelaimonas in Athens was off-limits to immigrants. Neo-Nazi patrols affiliated with the Golden Dawn Party began attacking migrants in this neighborhood. The violence continued escalating through 2010. In 2013, after the murder of anti-fascist rapper Pavlos Fissas, the number of hate crimes in Greece declined for several years until 2017. Many of the crimes in 2017 have been attributed to other groups like the Kryptea Organization and Combat 18 Hellas. <laughs> Hungary The Hungarian Guard is a neo-Nazi paramilitary organization in Hungary. The Guard was modeled on the Arrow Cross Party, which participated in the murder of Jews and Gypsies during the Holocaust. It serves as a paramilitary force for the far-right Jobbik Party. Gypsy homes have been targeted by nighttime death squads who throw a Molotov cocktail through the window and then open fire on the inhabitants as they flee their burning homes. The chief of police in Miskolc has made public statements that, Hungarian and Gypsy cultures can't mix. Topic. Netherlands The Coordination Forum for Countering Antisemitism reports that on 17 May 2011 in Leek, Groningen, antisemitic graffiti was found at a Jewish school. The graffiti consisted of a swastika and the text, C18, or Combat 18, a neo-Nazi organization active throughout Europe. The number 18 refers to the initials of Adolf Hitler, A and H being the first and eighth letters of the alphabet, respectively. Topic. Poland Under the Polish constitution promoting any totalitarian system such as Nazism and Fascism as well as Communism as well as inciting violence and or racial hatred is illegal. This was further reinforced in the Polish Penal Code where discrediting any group or persons on national, religious, racial or religious grounds carries a sentence of three years, although several small far-right and anti-Semitic organizations exist, most notably NOP and ONR both of which exist legally, they frequently adhere to Polish nationalism and national democracy, in which Nazism is generally considered to be against ultra-nationalist principles, and although they are classed as nationalist and fascist movements, they are at the same time Time considered anti Nazi. Some of their elements may resemble neo Nazi features, but these groups frequently dissociate themselves from Nazi elements, claiming that such acts are unpatriotic and they argue that Nazism misappropriated or slightly altered several pre existing symbols and features, such as distinguishing the Roman salute from the Nazi salute. Self declared neo Nazi movements in Poland frequently treat Polish culture and traditions with contempt, are anti Christian, and translate various texts from German, meaning they are considered movements favoring Germanization. According to several reporter investigations the Polish government turns a blind eye to these groups and they are free to spread their ideology, frequently dismissing their existence as conspiracy theories, dismissing acts political provocations, deeming them too insignificant to pose a threat, or attempting to justify or diminish the seriousness of their actions. <laughs> Russia there are a few Russian neo-Nazis that openly admire Adolf Hitler and use the swastika as their symbol. Russian neo-Nazis are characterized by racism, anti-Semitism, homophobia, Islamophobia and extreme xenophobia towards people from Asia. Their ideology centers on defending Russian national identity against what they perceive as a takeover by minority groups such as Jews, Caucasians, gay people, Central Asians, East Asians, Roma people, Gypsies, and Muslims. 
There is also a widespread gay rights Nazi skinhead subculture with its own V Contacta group, Gash, and an alleged 1,700 members in Moscow alone. Russian neo Nazis have made it an explicit goal to take over the country by force, and have put serious effort into preparing for this. Paramilitary organizations operating under the guise of sports clubs have trained their members in squad tactics, hand to hand combat, and weapons handling. They have stockpiled and used weapons, often illegally. Some observers have noted a subjective irony of Russians embracing Nazism, because one of Hitler's ambitions at the start of World War II was the General Plan Ost Master Plan East, which envisaged to exterminate, expel, or enslave most or all Slavs from Central and Eastern Europe e.g., Russians, Ukrainians, Poles etc. Russian neo-Nazis deny the authenticity of this plan and instead emphasize the 1939–1941 Nazi-Soviet non-aggression pact. At the end of the Nazi invasion of the Soviet Union, over 25 million Soviet citizens had died. In a 2007 news story, ABC News reported, "...in a country that lost more people defeating the Nazis than any other country, there are now an estimated 50,000 to 70,000 neo-Nazis, half of the world's total." The dissolution of the Soviet Union in 1991 caused great economic and social problems, including widespread unemployment and poverty. Several far-right paramilitary organizations were able to tap into popular discontent, particularly among marginalized, lesser educated and unemployed youths. Of the three major age groups—youths, adults, and the elderly—youths may have been hit the hardest. The elderly suffered due to inadequate or unpaid pensions, but they found effective political representation in the Communist Party, and generally had their concerns addressed through better budget allocations. Adults, although often suffering financially and psychologically due to job losses, were generally able to find new sources of income. Russian National Unity RNE, founded in 1990 and led by Alexander Barkashov, has claimed to have members in 250 cities. RNE adopted the swastika as its symbol, and sees itself as the avant-garde of a coming national revolution. It is critical of other major far-right organizations, such as the Liberal Democratic Party of Russia LDPR. Historian Walter Lacour calls RNE far closer to the Nazi model than the LDPR. RNE publishes several news sheets, one of them, Rusky Poriotic, claims to have a circulation of 150,000. Full members of RNE are called Soratnik comrades in arms, receive combat training at locations near Moscow, and many of them work as security officers or armed guards. On the 15th of August 2007, Russian authorities arrested a student for allegedly posting a video on the internet, which appears to show two migrant workers being beheaded in front of a red and black swastika flag. Alexander Verkhovsky, the head of a Moscow-based center that monitors hate crime in Russia, said, "It looks like this is the real thing." The killing is genuine. There are similar videos from the Chechen war. But this is the first time the killing appears to have been done intentionally. Sweden Neo-Nazi activities in Sweden have previously been limited to white supremacist groups, few of which have a membership over a few hundred members. The main neo-Nazi organization as of 2017 is the Nordic Resistance Movement. Nordic Resistance Movement self-identifies as a national socialist political movement with a parliamentary branch. They are also active in Norway, Finland, and Denmark. <laughs> Switzerland The neo-Nazi and white power skinhead scene in Switzerland has seen significant growth in the 1990s and 2000s. It is reflected in the foundation of the Parte National Orientierter Schweizer in 2000, which resulted in an improved organizational structure of the neo-Nazi and white supremacist scene. Topic: <inaudible> Turkey. Apart from neo-fascist Grey Wolves and the Turkish ultranationalist Nationalist Movement Party, there are some neo-Nazi organizations in Turkey such as the Turkish Nazi Party or the National Socialist Party of Turkey, which are mainly based on the Internet. <laughs> United Kingdom <laughs> Asia <laughs> India 
Though Hindu nationalists distanced themselves from the totalitarian regimes with whom they had previously enjoyed close ties, Nazism and Nazi occultism, in particular, have remained a subject of interest in India throughout the post-war era. Pakistan Pro-Nazi sentiment is widespread in Pakistan, according to the German magazine Der Spiegel, compounded by the antisemitism engendered by the opposition to Israel and support for Palestine general throughout the region. Such attitudes, exemplified by a belief that Hitler was a military genius, are shared by both Muslims and Hindus, and are related to the belief that Pakistanis are Aryans, and therefore would be accepted in Nazi Germany. Israel Neo-Nazi activity is not common or widespread in Israel, and the few reported activities have all been the work of extremists, who were punished severely. One notable case is that of Patrol 36, a cell in Petah Tikva made up of eight teenage immigrants from the former Soviet Union who had been attacking foreign workers and gay people, and vandalizing synagogues with Nazi images. These neo-Nazis were reported to have operated in cities across Israel, and have been described as being influenced by the rise of neo-Nazism in Europe, mostly influenced by similar movements in Russia and Ukraine, as the rise of the phenomenon is widely credited to immigrants from those two states, the largest sources of emigration to Israel. Widely publicized arrests have led to a call to reform the law of return to permit the revocation of Israeli citizenship for, and the subsequent deportation of, neo-Nazis. Topic. Mongolia From 2008, Mongolian neo-Nazi groups have defaced buildings in Ulaanbaatar, smashed Chinese shopkeepers' windows, and killed Chinese immigrants. The neo-Nazi Mongols' targets for violence are Chinese, Koreans, Mongol women who have sex with Chinese men, and LGBT people. They wear Nazi uniforms and revere the Mongol Empire and Genghis Khan. Though Sagan caste leaders say they do not support violence, they are self-proclaimed Nazis. Adolf Hitler was someone we respect. He taught us how to preserve national identity, said the 41-year-old co-founder, who calls himself Big Brother. We don't agree with his extremism and starting the Second World War. We are against all those killings, but we support his ideology. We support nationalism rather than fascism. Some have ascribed it to poor historical education. Topic. Taiwan The National Socialism Association NSA is a neo-Nazi political organization founded in Taiwan in September 2006 by Xu Na Kai Chinese, Xu Na Qi at that time a 22-year-old female political science graduate of Suzhou University. The NSA has an explicit stated goal of obtaining the power to govern the state. The Simon Wiesenthal Center condemned the National Socialism Association on 13 March 2007 for championing the former Nazi dictator and blaming democracy for social unrest in Taiwan. <inaudible> Iran Several neo-Nazi groups were active in Iran, although they are now defunct. Advocates of Nazism continue to exist in Iran and are mainly based on the Internet. Americas Brazil Several Brazilian neo-Nazi gangs appeared in the 1990s in southern and southeastern Brazil, regions with mostly white people, with their acts gaining more media coverage and public notoriety in the 2010s. Some members of Brazilian neo-Nazi groups have been associated with football hooliganism. Their targets have included African, South American and Asian immigrants, Jews, Muslims, Catholics and atheists, Afro-Brazilians and internal migrants with origins in the northern regions of Brazil who are mostly brown-skinned or Afro-Brazilian, homeless people, prostitutes, recreational drug users, feminists and — more frequently reported in the media — gay people, bisexuals, and transgender and third-gender people. News of their attacks has played a role in debates about anti-discrimination laws in Brazil including to some extent hate speech laws and the issues of sexual orientation and gender identity. Topic: <inaudible> Canada. Neo-Nazism in Canada began with the formation of the Canadian Nazi Party in 1965. 
In the 1970s and 1980s, neo-Nazism continued to spread in the country as organizations including the Western Guard Party and Church of the Creator later renamed Creativity promoted white supremacist ideals. Founded in the United States in 1973, Creativity calls for white people to wage racial holy war against Jews and other perceived enemies. Don Andrews founded the Nationalist Party of Canada in 1977. The purported goals of the unregistered party are the promotion and maintenance of European heritage and culture in Canada, but the party is known for antisemitism and racism. Many influential neo-Nazi leaders, such as Wolfgang Droge, were affiliated with the party, but many of its members left to join the Heritage Front, which was founded in 1989. Droge founded the Heritage Front in Toronto at a time when leaders of the white supremacist movement were disgruntled about the state of the radical right and wanted to unite unorganized groups of white supremacists into an influential and efficient group with common objectives. Plans for the organization began in September 1989, and the formation of the Heritage Front was formally announced a couple of months later in November. In the 1990s, George Birdie of Resistance Records and the band Rehoa popularized the creativity movement and the white power music scene. Controversy and dissension has left many Canadian neo Nazi organizations dissolved or weakened. <laughs> Chile After the dissolution of the National Socialist Movement of Chile in 1938, notable former members of MNSCH migrated into Partido Agrario Laborista (PAL), obtaining high positions. Not all former MNSCH members joined the PAL, some continued to form parties that followed the MNSCH model until 1952. A new old-school Nazi party was formed in 1964 by school teacher Franz Pfeiffer. Among the activities of this group were the organization of a Miss Nazi beauty contest and the formation of a Chilean branch of the Ku Klux Klan. The party disbanded in 1970. Pfeiffer attempted to restart it in 1983 in the wake of a wave of protests against the Augusto Pinochet regime. Nicolas Palacios considered the Chilean race to be a mix of two bellicose master races, the Visigoths of Spain and the Mapuche of Chile. Palacios traces the origins of the Spanish component of the Chilean race to the coast of the Baltic Sea, specifically to Gotaland in Sweden, one of the supposed homelands of the Goths. Palacios claimed that both the blonde haired and the bronze colored Chilean mestizo share a moral physonomy and a masculine psychology. He opposed immigration from southern Europe and argued that mestizos who are derived from South Europeans lack cerebral control and are a social burden. Topic. Costa Rica Several neo-Nazi groups exist in Costa Rica. The first to receive attention was the Costa Rican National Socialist Party, which is now disbanded. Others include Costa Rican National Socialist Youth, Costa Rican National Socialist Alliance, New Social Order, Costa Rican National Socialist Resistance which is Costa Rica's member of the World Union of National Socialists and the Hyperborean Spear Society. The groups normally target Jewish Costa Ricans, Afro-Costa Ricans, communists, gay people and especially Nicaraguan and Colombian immigrants. The media has discovered the existence of an underground neo-Nazi group inside the police. After a series of fake news spread by several far-right Facebook pages inciting hatred against Nicaraguan migrants, an anti-migration manifestation was organized on 18 August 2018 known as the Taken of La Merced. After Nicaraguan refugees were falsely accused of having taken La Merced Park in San Jose, a common gathering of the Nicaraguan community. Although some of the protesters were peaceful, participation of openly neo-Nazi groups and violent hooligans with criminal records caused riots and attacks on Nicaraguans or people suspected of being. The National Police Public Force intervened with up to 44 people arrested, 36 of such were Costa Rican and the rest Nicaraguans. Several violent articles including Molotov bombs were confiscated and some of the protesters identify themselves with swastikas and yelled, Fuera Nikas! Nikas out! <laughs> United States There are several neo-Nazi groups in the United States. The National Socialist Movement NSM, with about 400 members in 32 states, is currently the largest neo-Nazi organization in the United States. 
After World War II, new organizations formed with varying degrees of support for Nazi principles. The National States Rights Party, founded in 1958 by Edward Reed Fields and J. B. Stoner countered racial integration in the southern United States with Nazi-inspired publications and iconography. The American Nazi Party, founded by George Lincoln Rockwell in 1959, achieved high-profile coverage in the press through its public demonstrations. The ideology of James H. Madole, leader of the National Renaissance Party, was influenced by Blavatskyan theosophy. Helena Blavatsky developed a racial theory of evolution, holding that the white race was the fifth root race, called the Aryan race. According to Blavatsky, Aryans had been preceded by Atlanteans who had perished in the flood that sunk the continent Atlantis. The three races that preceded the Atlanteans, in Blavatsky's view, were proto-humans, these were the Lemurians, Hyperboreans and the first astral root race. It was on upon this foundation that Madol based his claims the Aryan race has been worshipped as white gods since time immemorial and proposed a governance structure based on the Hindu laws of Manu and its hierarchical caste system. The First Amendment to the United States Constitution guarantees freedom of speech, which allows political organizations great latitude in expressing Nazi, racist, and anti Semitic views. A First Amendment landmark case was National Socialist Party of America v. Village of Skokie, in which neo Nazis threatened to march in a predominantly Jewish suburb of Chicago. The march never took place in Skokie, but the court ruling allowed the neo-Nazis to stage a series of demonstrations in Chicago. In May, 2018, graduating students at Baraboo High School, between Milwaukee and the Minnesota border, appeared to perform a Nazi salute before their junior prom Baraboo Nazi salute photo. The photograph went viral on social media six months later in November, 2018. The school decided not to punish the students due to their First Amendment rights. The Institute for Historical Review, formed in 1978, is a Holocaust denial body associated with neo-Nazism. Organizations which report upon American neo-Nazi activities include the Anti-Defamation League and the Southern Poverty Law Center. American neo-Nazis are known to attack and harass minorities. Topic: Africa. Several groups in South Africa such as Afrikaner Weerstandsbeweging and Blank Beverdingsbeweging, have often been described as neo-Nazi. Eugene Terblanche was a prominent South African neo-Nazi leader who was murdered in 2010. <inaudible> Oceania There were a number of now defunct Australian neo Nazi groups, such as the Australian National Socialist Party, which was formed in 1962 and merged into the National Socialist Party of Australia, 1968 1970s, originally a splinter group, in 1968, and Jack Van Tongeren's Australian Nationalist Movement. Current active organisations include Antipodean Resistance, local chapters of the Aryan Nations, and Blood and Honour, as well as prominent individuals such as Blair Cottrell. In New Zealand, historical neo-Nazi organizations include Unit 88 and the National Socialist Party of New Zealand. Current active organizations include the local chapter of the Hammerskins, while white nationalist organizations such as the New Zealand National Front have faced accusations of neo-Nazism. See also References Informational notes Citations Bibliography External links Neo-Nazism at Jewish Virtual Library <laughs>